Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Freedom Friday Alternative News Podcast. Yep. And today is the 27th of January, 2017. Very well spoken. Thanks. Very nice. (laughs) We are going to entitle this program Satan's Social Media. Satan's Social Media. The first three stories include children using Facebook's new live video Mm -hmm. and they're killing themselves and doing crazy stuff on there. I don't like these kind of stories. Children Mm -hmm. or animals are, um, you know, the elderly. Yeah. It's bad. It's like man creates things like social media and then... It could be used for good, and it could be used for so much bad. Yeah. And um, this is one of these sad, sad trends. It seems mm-hmm. like a trend. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That we hope doesn't. Uh, we hope it doesn't take off too much here. Also, uh, then we'll, we're going to break um, from that and talk about this transgender man. And it gets confusing when you <laughs> when you talk about transgender men and women, but a transgender man is a female who is dressing like a man and transgendering into a man. Right, right, right. Transgender right. female is a man going to a female. So that's why it gets so confusing because they're confused. But the transgender man who's a female that looks like a little guy wants to join a female sorority. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's complaining about that because he can't get in. Yeah. Funny how they want it both ways. Absolutely nuts. And then we're going to talk about these rich guys, these very rich guys who are going underground to avoid the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. But it has something to do with us. It's just like the Terminator movies where Skynet comes alive. Yeah, but these are the things that they, they're they afraid of their own creation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's basically what it is. And they're afraid of what their creation is going to do to us. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be mad and go try to kill them. It's true. They're nuts. And then uh, we're going to talk about these chimeras uh, that are happening, these half-human, half-animal hybrids. See, I don't like that either. And it's been going on for years, but it's mm-hmm. um, it was closer and closer, but now it's it's here. You know, that's you know yeah. they're going to do that. And I think that's going to be a uh, big mistake. I really do. But they always try to sell it for medical benefit. Oh, sure. They really do. Okay, Ms. Capone, you have a uh, oh, yes. scripture warning. Well, it's in uh, Proverbs 11. And what I did is I just marked certain um, verses that um, describe the wicked. Okay. Okay, so Perfect. Uh, let's see. The first one is a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. The second one is when pride comes... Then comes shame. The perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit pot in the day of wrath. The wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. And a talebearer Reveal secrets. The wicked works a deceitful work. He that pursues evil pursues it at his own death. They that are, are forward heart 
are abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. The expectations of the wicked is wrath. He that seeks mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusts in his riches shall fall. He that troubles his own house shall inherit the wind. And the fool shall be servant to the wise heart of heart. He that hates reproof is brutish. The counsels of the wicked are deceit. That went into um, chapter 12, but I thought they were good. <laughs> no, all those, those are just words no. or just cool little sayings Mm-mm. from some wise sage. I mean, th- that's truth. And everything you read is truth. And all that does happen and will happen to evil You know what they are? People. They're spiritual laws. Mm-hmm. They Thank cannot you. be broken. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get away. Mm-mm. From these things. No. If you decide to be evil and wicked and live that kind of lifestyle, this is what's coming. It mm-hmm. just historically, it's been proven true. Yeah. They're curses. Mm-hmm. I like that. That's their laws. Mm-hmm. So we're going to take a commercial break and then we're going to be right back and we're going to start with the Facebook live stream satanic social media. Ka-ching. I don't know what all this fuss is about, about these pestilence. I think the scientists are doing a great job. Clueless? In the dark? Uh, I think the government's doing a good job. Have no idea what is really going on? I have an app for that. Kapow Radio Show app for iPhone and iPad. Kapow Radio Show app for Android. Get the app. Get a clue. Hey, Vinny. I love politicians. I think they've got my best interest in mind. Get the app. Get a clue. FifthHookMedia.com And we are back. You know, Ms. Capaldo, so many people that don't have a clue. And they've got to get the app so they can listen to the podcast and get a clue. That's right. Uh, The other way you can get a clue is, well, not you because you're listening already. So you people already have clues. You guys already got it. But those who might just be stopping in. Mm-hmm. The other way is you go to fifthhookmedia.com and then you can, if you like what you're hearing, then you can actually like what you read. There's books and stuff there. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So this Satan's social media, like I said, it's, um, uh, there's always good and evil. There's always two sides to these coins, you know? Yeah. And Facebook came out with this live video feature where you can just stream live now on your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And obviously it was designed for people to share their moments and things Mm -hmm. like that with their friends, but it's taken a kind of a creepy turn. Right. You know, not too long ago, a few weeks ago, we had those individuals who kidnapped um, oh, that, that uh, mentally yeah. um, unstable kid and they tortured him, you know, on live stream and made him drink toilet water and beat him. And I mean, and they, and then what's amazing is the stupidity of the crook today. Yeah. Now, yeah. when I used to chase crooks around, the last thing you want to do is have a witness mm-hmm. of the crime you're doing. The last thing crooks want wanted to do is have themselves on videotape. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but today, because they're getting more and more stupid, mm-hmm. they're de-evolving more and more, they actually put this on video mm-hmm. up in the cloud. It's not like, like a private video in their bedroom, and then the cops need a search warrant to, to flesh it out. Mm-hmm. They put it up. In the internet, yeah, for everybody to see. I think it's a lot. It has a lot to do with those reality shows. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a good point. It probably so. You, you know, know like, and ooh, it's I this is their fifteen minutes of fame. fame. Yeah, not realizing the consequences yeah. of their stupidity. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, this, uh, you know, this video will go viral and whatever, whatever that means and whatever that entails and what that does for you, I have no idea. But even it's it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's shocking. 
Well, this first one's, and this is really sad. And I do hope this isn't a trend, but it seems like we might be going in uh, this direction. Mm-hmm. This is um, this is a felony abduction charge for an 18 year old mother, and she taped her son. And this is just a little. And he's tight. a little two year old. Yeah, he's a little guy. She taped him to a wall, and she used that that packing tape. You know yeah, that stuff that is strong. Yeah, yeah, you can't. She used that packing tape, and she taped him to the wall, and then she taped his mouth and mm-hmm. stuff shut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this kid. He could have asphyxiated very easily. Yeah. And then she streams it on her Facebook live video. Mm-hmm. Absolutely incredible. Uh, there is a video of it on our Facebook page. That um, And it's pretty disturbing because it shows it this, very disturbing this little kid, um, you know, being taped. You can hear him crying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, muffled cries because mm-hmm. his, his mouth is taped. And the video is 20 minutes long. <sighs> My goodness. Mm-mm. Well, this is from Columbus, and she taped her toddler son to the wall. Now, she's been arrested and charged with third-degree felony abduction. Mm-hmm. Her charges followed after the nearly 20-minute live of video with her two-year-old taped to the wall. And then it was brought to the attention of the police by ABC6 Fox 28. The detectives viewed the Facebook video on a Wednesday afternoon, and then the 18-year-old was arrested in her home. Wow. Yeah. Uh, really crazy. The well, kid- thank God it was seen by those people, um, those TV people, because yeah. um, that Lemon guy, what's his, his name? Don name? Lemon. Don yeah. Lemon. He didn't think uh, what those four uh, youths did to that. Um, mentally challenged mm-hmm. boy was evil. No, he didn't. He said it was uh, poor home training. Yeah. Poor home training. So had he, said. he viewed this, he probably just said, oh, he would have well. said, well, you know, kids got to be kids and, uh, you know, maybe the two year old deserved it. Uh, yeah. yeah so thank Lemon. God that these people saw it instead of, uh, yeah, Mr. Lemon. The child was taken into custody for children's services. And in the video, you can hear the kid crying in the background and then um, the kid, you, it's, the video shows that the kid's taped to the wall with packing tape. Mm-hmm. And his heads and arms are taped to the wall. It appears he had tape around his ankles and over his mouth. And uh, the, his mother, 18-year-old gal, is seen walking around the home explaining how her son misbehaved and telling viewers, quote, parents don't need to whoop the kids. All you got to do is tape them to the wall. Wow. Yeah. So uh, she she told the detectives, oh, it was a joke. Yeah. It was a joke. Didn't look like a joke to me. No. And um, I guess there's others, other videos where she posted the kid and, and you can hear uh, the kid crying where she, she disciplined him by having him stand in the corner and doing all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um, in the video, she also mentioned it was her son and she could hang him upside down if she wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but what's disturbing, I mean, there's always been knucklehead, you know, parents out there, of course, but what's disturbing is that they're, they're putting this on video yeah, and streaming it live on their Facebook pages, which is a whole new, it's a whole new level of a, a can't fix stupid. And they don't think it's wrong. No, no, it is. That's what it's a social media madness. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like an insanity with this stuff. Now, a few weeks earlier, there was a, uh, an, um, well, I don't know if it was earlier or not. This was uh, January, well, no, it's just the 24th, just the other day. Yeah. This girl, she's 14. She was 14. She hung herself. She committed suicide, hung herself while streaming it live. And this is from Miami. That's what I mean. It, it seems like it's going to become a trend. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. This is sad. Yeah, it is sad. Yeah. She committed suicide on Facebook Live uh, for two hours. Her name is uh, Nika, or was it Nika? For two hours, Nika broadcast from her bathroom. She was in foster care. Mm. 
She eventually fashioned a homemade noose from her scarf, and then the live feed ended abruptly. Oh my Lord. Now I don't I don't know anything about Facebook Live. You know, I don't know anything about the live video stuff. I um the only thing I use the Facebook for is for Fifth Hook Media Facebook page. But I don't um I don't do all the personal stuff on it. So I've never used that. Um I I could imagine if you had a lot of friends and people watching you, you'd you'd want to live stream your birthday party or you know, your husband running into a wall or, or something. Mm-hmm. But um you know this this is getting this is getting crazy. It's like you know they have the attention of people now and now you can do this kind of stuff. But uh Nika, she was a petite 14-year-old and she killed herself while streaming the live event. Mm. Yeah. Uh she was like I said she was in foster care. And they say the the child welfare administrators, they say we are absolutely horrified and devastated by the news of this young girl's death. Um, I think it's interesting what happened here because she, what she, what she did is she attached a scarf to a shower glass door frame and she killed herself about 3 a.m. in the morning, taken to a hospital and then she declared dead. Mm. But one of her friends saw the live feed that showed her hanging in the bathroom. Oh, Lord. So for... And this was early in the morning. It was like yes. 3 o'clock in the morning. Yes. And she's, she was in the bathroom for a couple of hours talking about this. So one of her friends sees her hanging in the bathroom in the live feed. But here's, here's what got... It got screwed up uh, as far as her help goes. The friend called Miami-Dade police. Mm -hmm. To report it. So officers showed up at the friend's house and not the victim's house. Victim's house, house, yeah. She then gave them an incorrect address in Miami. Oh, Lord. I mean, you know, these are kids. Yeah, right. 14 year old kids. And then the residents at that address gave police the address of her foster home in Miami Gardens. So Miami Gardens officers. Arrive there and then they find her hanging. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And it's the foster weird. parents were asleep in their bedroom. They had no idea. And as they tried to, you know, re- resuscitate her, it didn't work. So, uh, I mean, it's just really, really, really sad stuff. And you just wonder, you know, what is going on mm, mm, mm. Yeah. In, in a world where this is, you know, becoming a a thing. Yeah. You know. Is a thing. I guess. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. I was just going to say within this story is another story about a 12 year old girl who did the same thing. She killed herself in a 40 minute live video. And she, yeah. Yeah. And this was uh, in December. Well, there's also other, we'll talk about that girl too, because this is very similar, but uh, there's also other people. I guess there was two other suicide attempts, one in France and one in mm-hmm. Thailand. Mm-hmm. And that was thwarted when the viewers alerted police. Right. So I guess what happens if you view something like this, uh, I guess you can um, immediately, I don't know how you do this, but you can notify Facebook and they'll shut the feed down or something. Hmm. I, I don't know. It, it's not going to prevent people from killing themselves, but I don't, I don't know how it works. You know, I, I really don't know. And then here's the other problem is that once these things go live, anybody could take that video apparently and download it. Mm -hmm. So though the family then wants to get rid of the video, the suicide of their children, other people can keep showing it on their pages. And that's not against Facebook's policies, by the way. Mm hmm. To show the suicide over and over again. In fact, the girl you just mentioned, that 12-year-old, that's exactly what's happening in her case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I don't know how it works because I've never messed with this stuff. But I guess guess if someone violates community standards while using Facebook Live, 
they want to interrupt these streams as quickly as possible when they're reported to us. And so they've given a way for people to report violations during a live broadcast. And then they suggest people contact law enforcement or emergency services themselves if they become aware of something where the authorities can help. So Facebook doesn't do that. They would just, they'll just cut the live stream. So apparently the person who's, you know, killing themselves or doing Mm -hmm. something stupid, I guess would notice that they're not being filmed anymore or something. I, I I don't know. It's crazy, but it's, you can see this really being used as a satanic tool Yeah, for people. Mm-hmm. Now, the one you're talking about, this was January 12th, this article. Um, she's a 12 year old girl. She killed herself and I'm not sure how she did it, but she killed herself on live video. Also, Facebook removed it two weeks later. Mm. Yeah. But other people had already downloaded it, and they're still showing, showing it. it. Yeah, man, that in itself is morbid. Yeah, I think so. And it doesn't violate their policies. Wow. Yeah. So uh, th- this article it says that live video has become increasingly controversial, as social media sites have encouraged use of the tool, but have struggled to monitor it. Mm-hmm. And then we talked about those. Four Chicago residents who kidnapped and tortured a mentally challenged guy in the beginning of this month. And they broadcast the whole thing on Facebook Live. And it was eventually taken down from Facebook, but not before it had been shared and embedded by, you know, thousands of other people. Mm -hmm. So then on December 30th, this time originating on another site with live streaming capabilities called Live.me. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Nicole, she was 12 years old, and this was in Georgia, decided to kill herself in a 40-minute live video after saying she had been physically and sexually assaulted by a family member. Wow. Yeah. Yes. See, yeah. Such torment Mm-mm. for such a young young person. Her family took down the video following the death of... But um, the police chief there was told that this video is still circulating on social media on platforms like Facebook. And he says he doesn't have the legal authority to make anybody take the video down. Yeah. But you don't. And he says, we want it down as much as anyone for the family. And it may be harmful to other kids. Mm-hmm. They contacted some of the sites. They asked if they had to take it down, and by law they don't, but it's just the common, decent things to do. Right, right. Yeah. So they're actively working on trying to track down all these sites and get it taken down, but you don't have to make people do that so people can still, you know, play it over and over again. That's awful. Yeah. I I don't know, you know, where, where are... Yeah. Where our society is. I mean, I do know where it's heading, but um, my goodness. Yeah. You know. It's sad. I found another story from uh, from that Arkansas woman, and um, apparently she had some health issues. She was young. She was, um, let's see here, 26 years old, and she committed suicide mm. um, live and with her uh, baby with her child in her arms. No kidding. Yeah, she had um, some kind of thyroid problem, health issues. Yeah. And she didn't want to live anymore. And so she committed suicide on video. Right there on mm-hmm. Facebook Live. I, you know, I would imagine, too, it's the whole idea of having a lot of friends on Facebook and a lot of... Um, you know, some of most of them being fake, but you know, mm-hmm. you know, some people you do know that are following your lives and you're following their lives. And I guess you have an audience there and you can tell them your woes. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's really no, different. I think it's a cry for help. I yeah. really do. I, I just think they're hurting so much, but they don't know how to, mm-hmm. to cope with it. It just, it makes you wonder too, how many other videos preceded Mm-hmm. the actual death um before they did it i 
it's really hard to say. Yeah. You know, who knows? Cause like I said, I don't, I don't do this stuff or follow this kind of thing, but, uh, it's, it does seem like some kind of weird trend. Mm-hmm. It really does. All right. You know what? Let's, um, let's lighten it up. That's heavy. That's heavy okay. stuff, but it's just, it's important to know where we're, you know, where we are heading, you know, as a, as a human race. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, you know, we've been in the drain for a while, uh, being pushed out in the ocean with the rest of the poop. And, uh, it's got to come to an end here at some yeah. point. It's just, there's no way, uh, society as it exists could go on much longer. Mm-mm. Um, we're just, we're kind of hanging by the thread of technology. That's all we're doing. We're and being destroyed. We really are really. in so many ways on so many levels. Mm-hmm. It's very, very bad. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a can't fix stupid segment, so <laughs> I need music, okay. please. Okay. In a world of mass confusion, a transgender man tries to join sorority at Northwestern, and he pushes for change in Greek life. A Northwestern University freshman who recently came out as transgender tried to join a sorority this month, yearning for deeper friendships on campus. Now, remember, this is a female who's dressed like a little boy Mm -hmm. because it identifies as a male, Mm -hmm. right? Right. But it doesn't want to join a male fraternity. Because it was too uncomfortable. Too uncomfortable for it. So it wants to hang around its female (laughs) partners. But yet it's come out as, I'm not female. So that it can develop deeper friendships. Yes. With females. Yes. So it's very, very confused on so many levels. But remember, we watched a video years ago. Yeah. About a female becoming a male. So that it could marry a female. Yes. Yeah. Did I get that right? I don't know. Or I remember. Marry a male. Something like that. I remember the documentary. And by the time it got done, you were like, what? Yeah. It was a female that became a male so that it could marry a female. Yeah. <laughs> so I was gay. But See, then I'm not gay. But I think I like a female, but I'm still gay. I don't know. These are great algebra problems. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts. Well, this case is unusual because the student is a transgender man, born with a female body, but identifies as a man, and already beginning to make the transition. Okay. 18-year-old Adam Davies, it's a female, remember, said, I'm going to call it an it, it's because it's a she, how about she, he, Mm -hmm. said she, he, was drawn to the tenets of Greek life, philanthropy, bonding, and leadership, but that with his, he, I'm sorry, she, he's changing body. <laughs> he may not, she, he may not feel comfortable living in a fraternity. <laughs> so she, he sought out the sisterhood of a sorority instead. See, crazy. I guess I see it on a level that transcends the gender binary. It said, <laughs> so it's okay. It's okay to use the gender for my benefit and go identify as a male, except when it doesn't benefit me, yeah, then, I then it back. says yeah. I want to transcend gender binary. Yeah. So a lot of international, uh, so- so- sororities, <laughs> sororities, I hate that word. Have in the last few years adopted language to better include transgender women. This was among the first instances in which an openly transgender man participated in the recruitment. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the first case of its kind. In the end, there was no suority that extended he, she, he a bid. Because each chapter's membership decisions are private. It's unclear whether gender identity was a factor. You think? Yeah. 
Other students, regardless of gender identity in past years, have attempted to join without receiving a bid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she, he said, she, he's very disappointed. She, he won't experience a candlelight ceremony, wear Greek letters or have mentoring relationship with older sorority members. Yeah, but what do you expect? And how can you they could possibly um, identify with you? I know. Because though you're a female, you're dressed like a male and you identify as a male, but yet you want to join a female club. Yeah, it's so too confusing. Yeah. So anyway, that's, yeah. I mean, you can go on and on with this, but that's it in a nutshell. It's insane. <laughs> it's insanity. Just insanity. Okay. How about these guys in Silicon Valley? They're billionaires. Oh. They're prepping to survive in underground bunkers. That's right. They're going underground. Yep. One of the more peculiar, peculiar hobbies popular among the Silicon, Silicon Valley elite is an obsession with preparing to survive for end times. They call them preppers. Mm-hmm. Now, but they have a different reason than most people do. Yeah. Most people have other reasons. These guys are inspired by fear that artificial intelligence will one day displace so many jobs that there will be a revolt against those behind the technology. Mm-hmm. And this is just like the Terminator movies. Yeah. When Skynet became uh, live, mm-hmm. then uh, there was a war between man and the machine. That's right. And they had, a, and they, and in one of the movies, they went back in time to go kill the inventor of the claw of mm-hmm. the Terminator. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's <laughs> yeah. And this is it. So they're afraid of that. They're, they're afraid that we're going to go get them for, in, you know, inventing all this technology that's going to uh, kill us. Mm-hmm. It's the topic of an essay in the New Yorker. It's called Survival of the Richest. Wow. By Evan Osnos. And it delves into why tech billionaires are particularly attracted to the idea. Uh, the co-founder of LinkedIn... He says the prepper movement among tech-made billionaires is largely inspired by fear (laughs) that artificial intelligence will one day displace so many jobs and there will be a revolt against those people behind the technology. The disruptive effects of automation and AI on workers and their livelihoods is uh, is a future that even President or ex-President Obama warned of Uh a few weeks ago. Uh, Reddit CEO, Steve Huffman. Uh, Also, uh, Trump-loving Peter Thiel. Mm, Peter Thiel. The list goes on. There's all kinds of people. They're all prepping. They say 50-plus percent of other tech billionaires have a home to escape to. But the instinct to run, hide, and survive is only one approach to a future that may see social order tumble into chaos as a result of extreme Inequity. Hmm. Wow. Um, the founder of PayPal told Osnos, the guy who wrote this article, he says, it's one of the few things about Silicon Valley that I actively dislike. The sense that we are superior giants who move the needle. And even if it's our own failure, must be spared. Yeah. Because how can the world continue without these brainiacs? Yeah. You talk about elites. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, they they can run, but they can't hide. Nope. Okay. Do you see this? This is um, a reality. Birth of half human, half animal hybrids. Pretty scary. Chimeras. Yep. Pretty scary stuff. I wish I had that uh, scripture in front of me from Proverbs. Yes, I do. I think I have it. 
Oh, no, it's Leviticus. Leviticus 19.19 says, You are to keep my statutes. You shall not breed together two kinds of your cattle. Mm-hmm. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, Amen. nor wear a garment upon you of two kinds of material mixed together. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds like a bunch of Old Testament yik yak, and you go, what does that have to do with anything? But it has a lot to do with stuff. Spiritual law. Yeah, spiritual law that's violated. There was a mixing of human and fallen angel at one time, and probably still is. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. It's been 120 years since Wells had published that novel, you know, that island of Dr. Mahro. Oh, yeah. But to read some recent headlines, you'd think we're veering dangerously close to that dystopic vision. Frankenstein scientists developing part human, part animal chimeras. That was in the UK's Daily Mirror in May of 2016. And then Washington Times said science wants to break down the fence between man and beast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Scientists, what they want to do is they want to implant human stem cells in an animal embryo so that it will grow specific human organs. This is always for your benefit. Mm-hmm. Always. Just like artificial intelligence and robots, it's always for your benefit. The approach could, in theory, provide a ready-made replacement for a diseased heart or liver, eliminating the weight for a human donor and reducing the risk of organ rejection. Uh, They're bold, controversial plants. They've been working on them for about 30 years now. You know that. If not longer. If not. Mm Mm-hmm. I would say longer. Yep. So now they're kind of, they're getting, well, I think they're there where they can... They say things are moving very fast Mm -hmm. today and that, um, you know, the early pioneers of this research, they say it's going to open up a whole new understanding of biology. Um, That is provided they can resolve some naughty ethical issues first. Questions that may permanently damage our understanding of what it means to be human. Basically, they just want to write laws so that they can continue to do this kind of research. Yeah. And make these things because mm-hmm. what you're doing is you're you're making you're putting human DNA and human parts in an animal, right? And you got to determine how human is that mm-hmm. creature that you're making, how yeah. much animal, how much human, and then you're going to harvest its organs. So that means you're going to kill it. Yeah, I know. Th- I know. There's a movie like that also. I, I, yeah, but I can't just think saw of it the, the other day. We didn't see the movie. We saw the previews or trailers mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, it's I an can't. older one. Um. Where they were, uh, I, I forget, but they, yeah, they like, who are we? Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, you are bred for people. Yeah. They were, they were clones. They were it was some clones. kind of cloning thing. Yes. Uh, but I forgot the name of what that was, but we saw it on YouTube. I think, um, somebody showed a little bit of it on YouTube. They were clones and they were asking why they existed or who they were. And, uh, they were told that. You know, you 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 look like your owner, and mm-hmm. you're basically what were developed for parts. Yeah. <laughs> um, for millennia, uh, chimeras were literally the stuff of legend. The term comes from Greek mythology. Homer described a strange hybrid of immortal. Um, he says, "Quote of immortal make, not human, lion fronted and snake behind a goat in the middle." It was said to breathe fire as it roamed uh, Lycia and Asia Minor. Hmm. Yeah. But today, a chimera, the word describes any creature containing a fusion of genetically distinct tissues. This can occur naturally or by science, obviously. And the cells mix to form a subtler mosaic across the whole body. Chimeras look and act like other individuals within the species. There is even a chance that you are one yourself, they said. (laughs) Right. It goes on and on, and they're doing all kinds of experiments using this kind of technology for the betterment of mankind, obviously. They want to 
they want to map the behavioral differences against the different regions of the brain that were occupied by two species. They think that would be interesting to do and mm. examine. Dear so they're, they're just playing this whole God thing. Yeah, yeah. they are. Uh, back when genetic screening was at its infancy, the mark difference between the two species that they would mess with helped to identify the spread of cells within the body and allowed them to, you know, look at the embryos and all this stuff. So they've come a long time. Some hybrid chimeras soon emerged, uh, kicking and mewling in labs across the world. They included a goat sheep chimera dubbed mm. a Jeep, G-E-E-P. The animal was striking the sea. It had a patchwork of wool and a coarse hair. Time described it as a zookeeper's prank, a goat dressed in a sweater of Angora. I have a picture of it, too. It's a really sad-looking creature. It's a mixture between a goat and a sheep, a Jeep. Uh, the scientist advised various conservation projects which hoped to use this technique to implant embryos of endangered species into the wombs of domestic animals. Mm -hmm. But they said, the scientist says, I'm not sure that has ever entirely worked, but the concept is still there. But now the aim is to add humans to the mix. Right. A project that could herald a new era of regenerative medicine. Mm -hmm. Wow. For two decades now, doctors have tried to find ways to harvest stem cells. Mm -hmm. At one time, they were looking at um, women volunteering to carrying these um, mm -hmm. these things full term. Yeah. But see, there's that ethical yeah, that they um, get get around. question again. Yeah. And here's a little side note here on the Soviet ape man. Mm-hmm. Today's plans to build a human-animal chimera may have provoked controversy, but they are nothing compared to the scandalous experiments of Laya Ivanov, also known as the Red Frankenstein. Mm. Hoping to prove our close evolutionary ties to other primates, once and for all, Ivanov hatched a crackpot scheme to breed a human-ape hybrid. This was in the 1920s. See, he tried to inseminate chimps with human sperm and even tried to transplant a woman's ovary into a chimp called Nora, but she died before she could conceive. Mm. When all else failed, he gathered five Soviet women who were willing to carry the hybrid. That's kind of like what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. However, the prospective father called Tarzan <laughs> died of a brain hemorrhage before he could carry out his plan. Mm. Ivanov was eventually arrested and exiled in 1930 for supporting the international uh, something. It was a crime that had nothing to do with his grotesque experiments. Mm. Wow. So this has been going on for a while. Yeah. So they say it's, it's theoretically possible in 2010... Uh, some dude of Stanford University Medicine and his colleagues created a rat pan pan pancreas in a mouse body. Yep. And using a similar technique. Pigs are currently the preferred host as they are anatomically See, remarkably just similar to humans. find it so yeah. disgusting. Anyway, so it, it looks like we're there. They're just looking for, you know, the legal, you know, the legal loopholes to get around mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, some um, some person here. Let's see. Uh, who is he? I don't know. But Belamonte is his last name or her mm -hmm. last name, and has been offered has offered two point five million dollar grant money on the condition that they use monkeys rather than human for stem cells oh, to wow. create um, chimeras. Wow. Well, well see, it's the rich people that are funding this stuff. Yeah. So they're in their little underground bunker. Because they don't want to die. No. Mm -hmm. They want to continue living. Thou you shalt know. surely not die. Yeah. It's nuts. Social media, Facebook live stream, all this stuff. It's just grotesque. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. It is. I don't like it. Yeah, we become a like grotesque it. species. And I think with that, I think it's time to to say ciao, babies. Good night. <laughs>